breakfast your favorite meal? Is your morning ruined when you get burnt toast? If you answered yes to that, then this is the video for you. Hi, I'm Danny. And I'm Siobhan. And we went on a hunt to discover the best toasting experience. We actually went out and got six toasters ranging from Amazon's best-selling toaster to one made in the 1950s. And we found our favorites and we wanted to share the results with you. So what makes a good toaster? Well, we decided to break it down into three different categories. Toast consistency, how evenly it toasts stuff, design, and then overall satisfaction with using it. If you're using it on a daily basis, it should be something that you enjoy, that you look forward to, and it makes your mornings a better experience. Here is the Sunbeam toaster from the 1950s. This is 70 years old. It uses a very complicated mechanical lever system that once actuated, it slowly lowers the toast in, turns on the heating elements. Once the thermal eye inside gets heated to a certain amount, it snaps and slowly raises the toast. And this is the mechanics, like how this thing moves the toast is probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in a toaster. It is, it really is. And it's so fun to use. It's a thing of beauty. I remember when we were pulling the toast out, it wasn't like the most even set of toast. It's kind of, yeah, it's not super uniform. Oh. Just that one was gorgeous, but yeah. it's nowhere near the same. This could, this would burn while that would just still be brown. This toaster is just gorgeous. I love the design. It's very minimal. It's got these beautiful Art Deco style engravings on the front and back. Um, it has really beautiful one slice engraved up here at the top. <laughs> in case it's, you forget. <laughs> in case you forget. It feels almost space age in its um, just sleek kind of rounded corners look. It looks like a car mm -hmm. from the 1950s. This thing does not toast bagels. That's the thing that, you know, this was going to be my favorite toaster. Yeah. Um, the only downside is that it doesn't toast bagels because it just, re it doesn't register that there's a slice of toast in there. Yeah. Slices don't even fit in and you have to kind of push them down and even then it doesn't take them. So that's quite disappointing. If they sold this toaster nowadays and like just refined it a little bit, this would probably be a, a big seller. I would get it, I'd say. Yeah. That would be my choice. The, the auto lower and raise feature is amazing. So this is the Breville, a bit more toaster. Australian design, made in China though. And the reason I got this toaster is because it had the highest consistent rating on Amazon. Uh, about 4,000 reviews and most of them were five stars. In terms of toast evenness, uh, that is actually where we saw a little bit of a discrepancy. So we got four slices here yep. and it looks like they're kind of unevenly toasted a bit, as you can see. The toast was very uneven. We had four slices in there. They were put in exactly the right spaces, but um, they were very inconsistent from slice to slice. There are some very nice features on this toaster. Though. Yeah. You can check on the toast, so you can uh, pull it up and, and check on it as it's cooking, which is very nice. This is the brown. The brownness setting. The brownness setting. And when you do that, it will count down. It lights up with LED lights and then it counts down. So you can see a visual representation of how much time you have left. Um, before your toast is ready, which is really nice. None of the other toasters had that. And it even tells you like, if you're gonna do the bagel button on here, it tells you which way to orient the bagels. It's literally written on top. Yes, it has a little embossed here, bagels face inwards, which is actually very helpful because for a lot of them, it's, it's not super intuitive <laughs> how you're supposed to load a bagel into it. So the Breville seemed um, to have toasted the bagel quite darkly compared to the bread. It was on the same setting, but unlike, this was different than all the other toasters too. It came out darker on the bagel setting. It's also a little bit burned on the edges, which is, um, so it's just uneven. It's a little bit warm, but like it's not hot to the touch. It seems like if you have a lot of people to feed, you have a big family or something, this would be a great toaster because you can just fit so much toast in here. Um, the really only downside for me is just the toasting con um, consistency was pretty, inconsistent. I would still enjoy using this one though. This is still one I would definitely take home. Overall, a very high quality toaster, I'd say. The Dash. This is a super popular toaster on Amazon. It's got over 10,000 reviews and it's got a cool little window in it. The toast evenness, I would say, was kind of disappointing. We had it on the medium setting. Oh yeah, this is one of them. Yeah, we had it on the medium setting 
and it barely toasted it at all. It didn't turn brown at all. So I think it was very slow to toast. It's not brown at all. They're crispy, yeah. but like, Those I'm not white. Yeah. And that was on the number three setting. So I can't even imagine number one setting is probably nothing. <laughs> Instead of like the nichrome wires that just kind of line the whole thing, it just has four tubes on the top and the bottom, and it takes forever for mm. it to heat up. As nifty as the viewing window is as a feature, um, it was very attractive at first, but honestly, in the actual experience of using it, I feel like I wasn't looking in very much, and it didn't really give me any extra information that I felt like I needed. And also with the lights, it just turned the whole thing it's orange. It's orange. <laughs> yeah. I was a little disappointed that uh, how much plastic was on this actually. The body, the base are all plastic, the handles and knobs, and maybe that doesn't matter to, s to some people, but for me, if I can avoid plastic, I'd rather, especially if it could be made out of metal. I would say the pros are that it's beautiful. It's very aesthetic. The window is cool. It's It makes yeah. a neat feature. And I like the different colors. Yeah, you're right. I love the colors. I love the um, selection of colors that you have. If this didn't have a viewing window, this thing would be totally forgettable. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a pro for me. Mm -hmm. And this takes up a lot of counter space, especially if you have a small kitchen. Um, so that's that's a big concern for me, I think. Where everyone gave it good reviews, like we weren't really particularly blown away by it. So, in comparison to the A little bit of discrepancy there between the reviews and what we found. Yeah. I call it the cuisine art because cuisine art. it's cuisine and it's <laughs> art. So, you know. So the reason we tested this toaster is because this is by far the like most reviewed toaster I could find. It's got over 26,000 reviews on Amazon, so. I mean, it's a very reputable brand, uh, Cuisine Art or yeah. Cuisine Art. In terms of toast evenness, <laughs> it didn't do anything special with toast. <laughs> so the toast, um, I don't know, it looks pretty uneven. And then this one got a lot, whereas the other ones were kind of light. And it was really the bagel feature, I think, that was the- Disappointing. Dis it was like kind of in, uh, inconsistent, as you can see, with the toasting. And also it toasted on both sides. So it doesn't seem like the bagel mode did really anything. Um, yeah, it's kind of pointless. This is pretty cooked on this side, <laughs> so. The point of a bagel button if I'm not mistaken, is that you could put a bagel in and it only toasts on one side. Well, when we looked inside of this thing and started toasting a bagel, it was like both heating elements were on and we were like, well, what's the point? The knob isn't, it's not the worst, but it's not the best, that's for sure. <laughs> that's it's, the it's lowest cheap compliment plastic possible. As well. I mean, I wouldn't say it's super poor quality, but it's just so boring. It's just so basic and bland. I this think if it. you have no soul, this would be the perfect <laughs> toaster for you. Yeah. Nothing about it like brings joy to me, mm -hmm. you know? And it doesn't do toast especially well either. It'd be different if it did, did like amazing toast, but it, yeah. it wasn't consistent. It was just consistent. okay. Like we had other toasters that were more consistent, mm -hmm. so. It's cheap, it's <laughs> affordable. Um, that's definitely a pro. It's not hideous. It's not hideous. <laughs> It's functional, certainly. It makes zero statement about who you are. Yes, it has no personality. Yeah, this is the Smeg. I bought it because I just thought it was beautiful. It just got an elegant design. It's probably the most aesthetic. All of these handles and features are, are so nice to use. It clicks, you know, when you go to the settings, this ball where you can put down the toast. It's just very, um, it's just nice to use. And that green. Nothing screams I'm in the 1950s and I'm going to live a conservative lifestyle <laughs> like this green color. Oop, there we go. Oh. I love that. That was a nice little pop. I know, right? Maybe I'm like biased, but that looks that? super even. There's barely any grill marks and it covers like the whole surface of the slice. Look at that piece of toast if you can see it. It's just so perfectly toasted. That's a beautiful piece of toast. Golden all the way to the corners. It's easy to think that because it's so beautiful, maybe it doesn't work as well, but this one really, um, really exceeded my expectations. Yeah. Maybe a bad thing for some people, it shoots toast really hard. That could be a downside is that it, it does kind of pop out and they could pop onto the counter. A little bit of a toast machine gun. Loading the bagel is really not intuitive. It's very counterintuitive. Normally you'd have a bagel, you break it in half and then you would put it in like this. But with this one, you actually have to turn it inside out and have these, the inside facing. Yeah, I don't know out. what engineer thought that that was a good intuitive idea. That's the only con. I mean, if you just know to do that right, 
It's not a con, really. Yeah. There's, there's, here's my right. baby boy. Duel it. That Duel it. Right. Duel it. The reason we got this toaster is because this is the currently the only toaster in production that's made in the UK. It's kind of revered as a beautifully handmade toaster that embraces the past. It's actually stamped with the person who made it um, yep. in the factory with their name. So Paul made this one. Thank you, Paul. Um, those are just like sort of picture perfect, actually. Yeah. Um, there is like the grill marks or whatever, but very evenly toasted yeah. and even on both sides, I'd say. Yeah, those look beautiful. They really do. This is unlike any of the other toasters, I would say, in many regards. Mm -hmm. You have this thing called the, the ejector here, which is called the peep, peek and pop. But as you can see, like if you have the toast in here, um, you can just pull it out as it's toasting and look at it. I really like this. It comes out at an angle, so you can kind of grab it by the corner. Yeah, you get a lot of purchase. One thing is that you can't cancel it once it starts, though. Ooh. But apparently it's fine. According to the manual, they said that's okay. It seems like you're breaking it. Uh, I don't like that. So, but that's how you would cancel it. It Anymore. feels like you're breaking it. Yeah, yeah it, it does like not feel like you're supposed to do that. Destroy it. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I noticed is that um, the bagels that we were using, it, they were a little bit difficult to get in and I kind of had to push them down in there. It does stick a little bit as well, yeah. but it's not a huge problem. It's just, you kind of, you can push it down and it's okay. And with the lever, it's fine. You can get them out okay. You know, this thing sells great in the USA, but it's not, maybe not ideally made for like the giant slices of toast that we consume here in the United States. Another big thing is that it doesn't pop the toast out when it's done. So you actually have to be there to, pull it out of the toaster. And we actually tested this to see if it would continue toasting. And it does, it gets like a full shade or two darker. It's kind of like driving a manual transmission. So in conclusion, design is like a huge element for me. And as long as like it still works okay, I'm fine with it. So I'd say the Smeg and the Duolet are probably my top choices with a partial preference for the Duolet, just because it's fun to use. I know it's an easy favorite. It seems to be everyone's favorite, but I love this mag. Um, it's just so consistent and the design is so aesthetic and beautiful, but it's yeah. it also works very well. My favorite was going to be the Sunbeam, but just the fact that it doesn't do bagels is, is the yeah. one that- and you can barely get it anymore. Every toaster works the same and it's really more important how much you enjoy using it. All of them toast bread. All of them are gonna give you toast. It's really about what it adds to your morning routine and what it adds to your breakfast. And I, I really do think that it's a, if it's a daily experience, it's gonna make a big difference in the long run. This was like just a personally fun project for me. It's not every day you get to test these products side by side. Let me know what you think in the comments. We like reading them and checking them out. If you wanna get any of these toasters, check out the Amazon link below. Thanks for watching.